I want to dive into the the album, but every song on there is so different in so many different the production of it, the influences that are behind it, the even the vocals, every one of those is so different and so interesting. And so I, I do want to dive into a couple. Like, like can we just start with the good horses with Miranda? Yeah. Cause that's the one that stuck out to me with the production. I think at first uh, it doesn't feature Miranda on like a verse, but these incredible harmonies that feel so yeah. uh, gentle, I think yeah. is the word. Yeah. But then I want, I want to ask you about the production because there's like this big room reverb at the end. You have this text painting where you're kind of in the distance and then you come back uh, and, and it just feels so intentional. Can you talk, talk to me about making that song? This was one that we knew what the bones were going to be, but we knew that it had like a lot of room to do, to kind of create a world around it. And my band played on this record. And so I feel like they all kind of knew really what was missing from my live show without talking about it. And I kept telling them, I'm like, I want some like thump. So whatever that means, I want to like feel it like in my chest. And um, I remember all of us just kind of like sitting around. We're in the middle of Jay Joyce's studio, which is an old renovated church. And so it's got lots of like beautiful sounds that just kind of like go through the entire sanctuary. And um when we were kind of he like headed towards the back of the song, I remember Jay being like, okay, we're going to act like we're fading out here. And then we're going to like kind of come back with it. And his reasoning for that is because good horses come home. And um, anyway, all of those things were very, very intentional. And it's one of my favorite songs. Yeah, that that's sure. the part that caught my attention the most was that ending of, of how it's so congruent with yeah. the words. But also I like the the imagery of good horses because – uh, it could be a man. It could be a dream. It could be a ho it could be literally a good horse. It could be you to your hometown, um, which I think is so is so special, especially because I know how your your parents feel about Miranda. Are they best friends now? My parents and Miranda, yeah. <laughs> they wish. <laughs> My daddy, look, he has this picture of him and Miranda on his phone, and he'll show all his buddies. He's like, "Check this out." I'm like, "Oh Lord." <laughs> That's so that's so fun. I I um I, I love that they that you have created those relationships too. Now there's some of these other songs too, your different sounds in there. You're the four by four by you, which kind of has this nineties like R and V yeah. vibe for me with the synths. Yeah. yeah. And and, and cause your influences, they're all over the place. In every single song, they're a little bit differently. So can you run me down the thought process of why you wanted it to each one to sound so different? Because um like I said, I all of my band members played on this record and they're all just incredible musicians and they they come from different types of music. Like one comes from funk, one comes from jazz, blues, one comes from rock, one comes from punk, one comes from uh, like Americana. There's a little bit of everything. And like I, I trust my people. And um, and when they find like certain guitar tones and things that they felt like were right for the song, I trusted that. And so you can hear a lot of them kind of sprinkled all in it. And that's really what happened. Yeah, it's truly the essence of country music, right? All those influences coming together to create something so special. And so what, uh, can, uh, before we get off the album here, I like to go through with the songs on the album and see if you can think about them in maybe a way you haven't thought about the songs before. And since obviously we haven't heard all of them, you just tell me which song on the album would relate to each of these scenarios. So which song on the album would you say you'd put on for a really good cry? Whiskey Color Crayon. Okay. Uh, what about a Let's Get Drunk song? Oh my gosh, Bar in Baton Rouge. Okay. <laughs> What's the best song to sing in the shower? Four by four by you. That, the power ballad kind of situation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> Uh, best song if you're going to be romantic with your partner to put on. Oh my goodness! Hmm. Any, many, money, mo. Um. <laughs> like it's also weird to listen to my own songs during that. <laughs> that too. That too. Um. I guess like if you're wanting to be like romantic in a cute way, counting chickens. Okay. And the best song for you? You got a lot of road trip songs. What What would be the best song for a road trip? Probably good horses. Okay. Like that. So now, now as we hear them, I'm going to listen back and go, okay, this, this is the one, this is, this is the, the 
cute romantic uh-huh. one. My wife, my wife's going to be like, how did you do that? Lainey told me to. Uh, it's going to be good. All right, so every, I mean, everything's happened so fast for you, which is just so special and so awesome. What do you feel like you need help with? The I most? just need help in general. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where are my shoes? <laughs> yeah, honestly. Um, I feel like the, like I've been in town for 13 years. I've been in Nashville for 13 years trying to do this. And I started working on this way before then. I, I wrote my first song at nine years old and I've like dedicated my life to this. Um, but I will tell you that I think those first 10 years of me being here prepared me for everything that's happening uh, with nothing happening at all. I think it just kind of like it built character and um, it just kind of like got me ready. And I wrote tons of songs and met tons of people and really just kind of got to know this town. And I guess the thing that I need help with is I need somebody to help me pack my bag. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you how, how far ahead of uh, before your trip are you trying to pack? Oh, shoot. I'm leaving in the morning and I ain't packed yet. And I'm going to be gone for several weeks. Okay. Uh, and are you a throw everything in the bag? I mean, you got, you, you got your, out, you got your show outfits, right? Well, for the most part, I, I, when I get home from the Grand Ole Opry tonight, I'm yeah. definitely going to have to try on a few things and, and make sure we're good to go. But yeah, I, I feel like I'm not super organized, but I know, like, I know where everything is. And even if I did cram it in there and something was kind of hanging out of the zipper, we'd still get there just fine. Yeah, just squish it back <laughs> in. And you're doing the Opry tonight with Post Malone, right? I am doing that. That's Opry, super, super fun with that so fun. that album coming out on Friday. What's it been like to work with Post? What what did you did you were you guys ever in the studio together? Did you write together? Did you send your parts? How did that song come? Yeah. So the first time I really got to spend time with him was when we wrote, and we wrote through the night. We wrote probably 12, 13 hours, and. uh, that's the first night ride I had ever done. I mean, I'm normally like 1030 in the morning to about three and then, you know, then might ride again in the evening. But it was crazy. It was I was like, this is some rock star stuff. They were playing me some of the stuff that they had been writing. And one song that him and Luke Combs had written together really just kind of stuck out to me. And it was on in the background. I kind of started singing some harmony. And uh, he was like, do you want to get on this song? And I'm like, all right, sure. And so that's how that happened. But we ended up writing several other songs that night. And one of the songs on the record that him and Dolly Parton do together is one that we wrote that night. Oh, that's cool. Cause I'm excited to hear that song. Cause yeah. that's, that's one of the, what we haven't gotten any teasers of that song I uh, know. from him. And we got so many others and they're like, oh, and I haven't whole... heard it either. Oh, wow. So you haven't heard the final no, version. No, I have of not song... heard it since we wrote it. You wrote the song. Haven't heard the final version. Yep. It's not like you're going to go, oh, Post Malone and Dolly, I'm not going to like the final version. So I guess, No. <laughs> right? Well, maybe when I see him tonight at the Opry, I'll be like, hey, play me a little, a little snippet. That, that would be awesome. Well, I'm, I'm excited to see that one. Um, what about, you've been popping up everywhere, obviously. What about the uh, the Miley thing? How did that come about? Like, obviously, you have your whole story of performing in Santa Montana. But for this specific, did, did she call you and be like, hey, uh, you, you want to bring your wig and we're going to do this? Or how did that happen that they involved you? Um, one of the producers of the show, her name is Tabitha. I worked with her for the ACMs a couple years ago. I danced and involved, and so she's she's a dancer, but she also like produces shows and stuff. And was reminded that I used to impersonate Hannah, and uh, she called and just asked if it was something I'd be interested in. I was like duh sign me up i finally got to meet her that's so fun and so that was the first time you met first time we met what's the first thing you said to her um i think i just said congratulations because she came up on stage and we met and then we went uh backstage and and talked a little bit but she just seems what a really cool moment excited for this album the last thing i want to do is a a game we do on the show every day so i want to involve you and it's called good news bad news and so i'll give you the good news of a weird news story you're just going to try and guess what the bad news of that story is, okay? All right. All right, so the good news of the story is that there is a couple that recently moved in together. It's a man and a woman, and the woman decided, hey, I really want to get a dog. The man was like, that's cool. Go ahead, adopt a dog. She did, adopted a beautiful dog. What do you think the bad news of that story is? The bad news is the day they got home with the dog, he got ran over. Damn, lady. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just That's trying to go dark. there or like maybe he crapped in the house i don't know 
Uh, very plausible. I don't, I don't know the bowel movement situation. However, the bad news of the story is that she adopted a dog with the same name as her ex-husband. Oh, Steve. no. No. Okay. She saw Steve and now brought I see Steve where we're home. going with this game. I don't need to go so hard in the core. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty dark. I'm not going to lie. That was, that was pretty dark. I can go there. I, can I go just there. can't imagine that Steve is going to be allowed to sleep in the bed at with that right no steve gonna be in the dog <laughs> literally house. in the dog house uh i love that well laney congratulations and so excited to hear the rest of whirlwind and i know you're taking over and doing some cool stuff uh, across our odyssey stations for your album so congratulations on anything to and everything take a deep breath and uh and enjoy the ride <laughs> thank you awesome. brother good to talk to you see you <laughs> bye Later.